What can't AI do? If popular media surrounding artificial intelligence is to believe, the answer to that question is nothing. AI can drive our cars, teach our children, and take care of our loved ones. Eventually, AI will control the entire world and we'll all need universal basic income because we'll all be out of a job. I'm being a bit sarcastic, but it's true that there are a lot of things that artificial intelligence can do. However, we never really talk about the things that AI can't do. So this week, I thought it would be nice to do a video on some of the things that we will have left when AI takes over the world. Kidding. Mostly. <laughs> the first thing that we'll have left is our emotions and our empathy. While AI is currently very good at classifying, clustering, and recommending things, it's not great at understanding or conveying emotions. Affective computing, a field that develops computational tools to identify and handle human emotions, has been working to solve this challenge for a while and is only now beginning to crack the surface. While effective computing has resulted in AI that can identify signs of depression or risks of suicide, it isn't going to be talking anyone off the ledge anytime soon. Even Sophia, the humanoid robot that we've discussed in past videos, tends to exhibit pre-programmed emotions when it's set up for a live demo and is otherwise pretty emotionally vacant. From the research I've seen, we're still pretty far away from emotional artificial intelligence. Another thing we'll have is our ability to explain our decisions. Explainability, which is often described as opening up the black box of AI, is a very active field of research. It's especially important in areas where how an algorithm came to a decision can be critically important. Areas like medicine, where you want to know how an AI arrived at a diagnosis, especially if it's wrong. And while there have been steps made towards deciphering by interpreting the weights that develop through training, we haven't seen a model that can explain itself without human interpretation. Finally, AI is not good at planning. Not everyone's great at planning things, whether it be a vacation, a work trip, or an event, but you can probably pretty safely say that AI is worse. Researchers at Stanford recently published a paper where they attempted to train an AI to look at the beginning and the end of an instructional video and predict the steps that got them from the beginning to the end. In other words, they wanted an AI that could plan out the steps needed to complete a task. This is different from the usual types of problems that AI solves, where it just does the task itself. Their model had an accuracy rate of around 31%, with an overall success rate of around 12%. And this is actually better than the state-of-the-art model before this, which had an accuracy rate of around 28% and a success rate of 3-ish percent. Obviously, we've got a long way to go before AI starts coming up with DIY arts and crafts. As an aside, I found that last paper through the Import AI Weekly Newsletter, which is written by Jack Clark, the policy director at OpenAI. If you're interested in keeping up with interesting research in the AI community, changes or proposals in AI policy, or you want to read some pretty cool AI science fiction short stories, then I definitely recommend signing up for the newsletter. And I'll include a link in the description below. Now, this isn't an exhaustive list of what AI can't do, and just because it's on this list now doesn't mean that AI won't be able to do it in the future. However, a lot of these tasks rely on the ability of an algorithm to not only predict, but understand, whether it be understand human emotions, or understand the planning process, or understand how to write code that reaches a particular end. We've seen some developments in AI that can write its own code. In fact, Google's AI was able to write its own baby AI, so I guess we can say that AI can procreate now, which is weird. <laughs> But as AI continues to develop, we've basically learned that AI is very good at things that we as humans have had to consciously learn, things like driving and repetitive tasks. However, it's not as good at things that we unconsciously learn, things like understanding tone, understanding facial expressions, and developing a planning process. And as AI continues to be integrated into our lives and into our workforce, I think that those areas of communication and emotional intelligence are going to be the places where we start to see new career paths. We're going to need people to interpret the AI or plan out the steps that the AI is going to need to execute. After all, even if AI might be able to diagnose your medical conditions better than your doctor, do you really want it to be the one that tells it to you? If you like this video and you'd like to see more videos like this, you can let me know by smashing that like button and subscribing to my channel. You can also support me on Patreon. Thank you so much to all of my current and new patrons. 
Otherwise, you can find me on the social medias, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. At Best of Computing, a field that develops computational solutions to emotion-based issues, has been attempting to... Nope. With an overall success rate.